Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and this is part two of a GAPS intro vlog. So I will have part one linked down below so you can go check that out. But in this part, we are continuing on going through the GAPS intro stages. It's very raw and real life. I'm just showing you exactly what we're doing and what we're making as we progress through the intro stages. Today is day two, and I'm going to show you what we're eating this morning, but I wanted to stop and talk a little bit about timing of stages and um, amounts of the liquid fermented foods to be starting with and things like that. So Dr. Natasha is very clear that people should only be on stage one for a very short time. What I like to recommend most people do is stay on stage one for about two to three days. Sometimes there are situations where they need to stay a little bit longer, and so five to seven would be the absolute longest that anybody would stay on stage one, and then move into stage two. All right, let's talk a little bit about fats for which stage, specifically stage one. So in stage one, we haven't introduced ghee yet, and so the additional animal fats that can be added to soups and cups of meat stock are going to be things like tallow and lard. They can also be other rendered animal fats like goose fat, duck fat, chicken fat, lamb tallow, beef tallow, lard. Any of those things are great for stage one. Once we're in stage two, we're gonna start adding ghee. So that can be added in as additional animal fat. And then much later when the person's ready, we can try butter and see how that goes. And so those are how the fats work as far as adding additional animal fats. So for us, since this is not our first time through intro, we've been through it a few times already. We are just staying on stage one for one day, so that was yesterday, and today we're moving into stage two. So for stage two, we get to add egg yolks, ghee, fermented fish. We can start a little bit different cooking techniques like casseroles and stews, so still cooking in liquid, but it's less liquid than just soups all the time. And so that's where we're at right now. So let me talk about amounts for fermented foods when you're adding fermented foods. So this is like the sauerkraut brine, liquid from fermented vegetables, or whey, any of those liquid fermented foods. It's really good, I find, for a lot of people to start with a half a teaspoon or one teaspoon at first and then very slowly increase that. Sometimes if people are very, very sensitive, they need to start with much less, like a quarter teaspoon or even a drop or even a drop diluted in water and take a drop of that. Wherever you need to start, it's good. It just means that you found something that your body needs and so you can start there and work up. And then for anybody who has been through intro before, you don't need to start again at those small amounts. You can start at whatever amount you know that you already tolerate when it comes to any of these fermented foods when you're going through intro. So then today, we are gonna go ahead and start on our day one of stage two. We're going to start by adding egg yolks and ghee. We're gonna add both of those in the same day, which again, if this is your first time through intro, you wanna be adding one new thing at a time, giving a few days to see how you do, go ahead and increase a bit, give a few more days, and then once you're in a good place with that food, start on the next thing. So it's very careful, very gradual. It's so much easier to be able to tell what's doing what if you just take your time and do it right than to rush through things on your first time through intro. Since we know that we don't have a problem with ghee or cultured dairy or, or anything like that, and we have also are used to having raw egg yolks on a regular basis, we're gonna go ahead and do both of those together in one day. So the recommendation for most people is to start with one egg yolk per day, see how you do for a few days, and then increase to two egg yolks a day. The goal is two egg yolks per bowl of soup for adults, which should work up to about three raw yolks per day. So you just add one at a time, wait a few days in between. Sometimes people have to wait on a certain number that's less than six for a while just to get their body in the right spot because egg yolks are powerful. They can bring on die off, believe it or not, they're powerful. And so you just have to go very slowly. And then some people need to start with less than one egg yolk. They have to start with like a quarter of a teaspoon or a teaspoon or a drop, just wherever you are. That's, you will find that out once you start. And then slowly increase until you're having at least six yolks per day. And for kids, I usually shoot for one yolk per bowl of soup or about three yolks per day. So today we are reheating some of that 
cauliflower blended soup that we had from yesterday. So once you're into intro a little bit and you have some things stockpiled in the refrigerator and freezer, it makes it easier because you're not cooking quite so much. So we are just reheating this this morning. We're going to be adding some ghee and our egg yolks to that and our liquid probiotic food and going to be enjoying that. And then we're still having our ginger tea in between meals. And then I'll show you what we're having next when we get to our next meal. To make sure that the soup is not too hot, we're gonna wait and add the sauerkraut brine a little bit partway through eating. This is the bones and, and meat and everything from the pork meat stock that I made yesterday, so I have it out for anybody who wants some meat to have along with their blended cauliflower soup. And as I'm going through it, I'm going to put the fat and skin and soft tissues into the blender and blend it up just like I did from the chicken. And then we'll have that to be able to add back into the meat stock for another recipe. Sometimes people don't like the flavor of the brine mixed into certain soups as much. So another option is to just drink the brine by itself, which is what he's doing. And then also a good goal amount, whatever amount you start with and however long it takes you to get there, a good goal amount for the liquid fermented foods is one tablespoon for every bowl of soup or cup of meat stock. All right, so originally earlier today, I had said I was gonna start some more chicken thighs going so that we would have more meat for lunch, but I decided we still have enough of the pork meat from that other batch of pork meat stock that I made yesterday for lunch, in addition to another soup that we're gonna make at lunchtime. So I decided to not start the chicken thighs cooking quite yet, but I did go ahead and put them together. So I'm gonna show you. So here they are. Um, in stage two is when you can start having stews. So stews and casseroles, and what that just means is less liquid. So soups have the most liquid, stews have less, and casseroles have the least amount of liquid. So for a stew, I usually will do about half as much water as I would if I were making a normal batch of meat stock soup. So um, I have chicken thighs at the bottom here, then I chopped up some onion, added some peppercorns in the tea strainers down there, some mineral salt, and then I have green beans, carrots. I cut the carrots with a crinkle cutter just to kind of keep things interesting. Just a nice little touch to add some interest. And then some fresh sage from the garden. And then anytime that you have meat, have an opportunity for meat to kind of sit in some liquid for a while before cooking is a really great opportunity to go ahead and ferment the meat. So fermenting the meat makes it easier to digest and it also adds really nice flavor. So I put some sauerkraut brine in there along with the water and then I'm just gonna put the lid on this and then I'm gonna let it sit for a little while at room temperature and then move it to the refrigerator and then uh, later on I'm just gonna start cooking this on the stove top to eat for dinner later tonight. Let's also talk about die off a little bit. A day two or somewhere around there is a really common time for people to start feeling the effects of die off. So die off is when the Pathogenic flora starts dying because it's not being fed, so it's getting starved out because you're not eating the sugars and the carbs and things that you were before that feeds them. And then also you're introducing probiotic beneficial bacteria and then in, in the fermented foods, and then that is causing it to die off as well. And so it's good because we need die off to make progress, but it's common to feel a little yucky, a little tired at first especially. And there are some things to deal with that. Number one is rest. Make sure to take it easy, get extra sleep, uh, clear out your schedule. And then also other things that can really help are detox baths. Uh, Epsom salt baths are really helpful. Uh, spending time outside barefoot, uh, grounding, su extra sunlight, uh, swimming in natural waters, depending on the time of the year, all those kinds of things can really help you through that. If you're feeling really yucky, like more than just a little blah off, then you're going too fast with the fermented foods or the new foods, and you need to back up, slow down, take the newest things out, 
and go back. And then all of this is so nuanced and so individual. And I am a certified GAPS coach and I coach people through this and give them individualized guidance in my coaching package. And there's information on that down below if you're interested. Other things that can happen are feeling hungry more often. And so I always like to remind people that on GAPS intro, you there throw out the idea of three meals a day. Most people on GAPS intro need to eat more than three meals a day. So every time you're hungry, eat a meal. Get rid of the idea of like snack foods versus meal foods. Just every time you're hungry on GAPS, eat a meal. So your body needs nutrients when it's doing this hard work. So get out some more meat stock and drink it. Get out another bowl of soup, heat it up, eat it. Those kinds of things. Also, keeping blood sugar stabilized is huge. I talked about that a little bit in the beginning when I talked about those coconut oil and honey or ghee and honey treats. And you can either eat spoonfuls of that or you can freeze them in little dollops like I did. Anytime people are feeling irritable and have sugar and carb cravings, pull some of those out and eat them and it's really, really helpful. So this is what I have going for lunch. It's another blended soup. There's some beets cut up in there and some onions in some chicken meat stock. It's the remainder of the chicken meat stock from yesterday. You're coming to take a look. So I'm gonna let that finish cooking nice and soft and then I'm gonna blend it up with an immersion blender. We're gonna serve it with a different probiotic food. We're gonna swirl in some cultured cream. Before that, we're gonna add our egg yolks and then enjoy that. Also, while I'm waiting for that soup to cook, I'm going through my pork pieces from the meat stock that I made yesterday. And I wanted to show pork pieces make the most amazing gelatinous meat stock. So depending on what cuts you use and different things, you'll get more or less gelatinous with every batch. But the goal is to mostly have it pretty gelatinous and it all evens out. So I have the meat and the carrots. I'm putting aside here the soft connective tissue and any of this uh, gelatinous meat stock will go into there. Bones are just going out to our chickens. And here while the soup is still nice and hot, I'm just going to add some ghee. Come take a look. Mm -hmm. It's very really yummy. It's clarified butter. Yeah, today is, is red soup day. So here is the chicken stew from earlier. So this is at the end of the cook time. I went ahead and pressed some fresh garlic cloves and added those. And then we're gonna serve this up into bowls. Once the meat stock part of it is cool enough, we're gonna add some liquid probiotic food. And that'll be sauerkraut brine along with this meal. And then you can add the raw egg yolks, but I'm actually doing the egg yolks in a different way. Um, after dinner for a dessert and I'll show you that once we get to that. So for the egg yolks that could have been included in tonight's meal, I, we're actually going to do something different. We're going to do a dessert. So we're going to make ice cream. So I put all the egg yolks in here. So there's eight in there all together, two per adult and one per child. And then I have a quart or close to a quart of cultured cream. So this is cream cultured with kefir culture and then some raw local honey. And so I'm going to whip these together in the blender and then put them in our ice cream maker and then we're going to enjoy that. Here is the meat stock from the stew, I just went ahead and separated everything out. So we have the meat, vegetables here, skin and soft connective tissue here that I'm gonna blend and then add to the meat stock that I have strained out here. And then here's our ice cream, almost ready.
Hello! Today is day three. We are working through more of stage two, adding the rest of the foods. So this morning I'm going to be putting together just a little soup. So I have some meat stock in here. Now this is normally what my meat stock looks like. This is, you know, meat stock goals here. Nice and jelly coming right out of the refrigerator. This is that pork meat stock. So I'm just going to heat that up so that it's liquid again. I'm going to cook some peas in it so it's nice and soft. So just a little simple soup there of meat stock and vegetables. And then we got some more ginger tea going as well. And then we are doing soft boiled eggs today. So I have those in a pan that I'm going to cook soft boiled and then we'll serve all of that together in a bowl. We will add additional fat as needed and liquid probiotic food, which will be sauerkraut brine when the meat stock is cool enough to add. So to make soft boiled eggs, you first put about an inch of water in a pan and you bring just the water to a boil. And then you add the eggs in a single layer, put the lid on, set the timer for six minutes. And then as soon as the cook time is up, you uh, take them and, and run them under cold water and that stops the cooking. Then you can peel them and enjoy them. So the next thing that we're adding on stage two is fermented fish. So I made this ahead of time a while ago and just had it ready to go. I have a video that I will link down below that is a, a whole tutorial on exactly how to make this fermented fish, but it's really tasty. My kids love it. They are so excited and I had to quick get this, grab my phone and, and document this before we, we polished it all off. So. This is really helpful to include because it's a wonderful source of those essential fatty acids and Dr. Natasha recommends it. So as with all of the rest of the GAPS intro foods, as you introduce them, you're supposed to keep continuing to have them on a regular basis as much as possible to really get the great benefits. So there's the fermented fish. For later today, I'm getting this started like late-ish mid-morning time. Uh, we're going to have a casserole. So this is the next progression of soups, then stews, then casseroles. And you remember on stage two, you get to start having stews and casseroles in addition to soups. So a casserole has even less liquid in it than a stew. So the ratio I like to use for casseroles is about one cup of water for every pound of meaty bones. So in here, I actually have a beef roast. So this is a roast that does not have a bone in it unfortunately so I added some beef knuckle bones and they have a lot of connective tissue on them so they should really help add some great nice collagen and um, connective tissue properties to the meat stock and with a casserole there's little enough liquid that parts of the meat are going to be sticking out and so you start to get some of that nice roasted texture when you have some of the meat exposed so for this I'm going to be adding some carrots and onions I'm adding leeks also, and then I'm also doing something really fun that I discovered. A friend of mine actually t shared this with me, and it's I thought it was brilliant. So you know how potatoes are starchy, they're not on gaps, right? But radishes are, and when you cook radishes, like in a soup or stew or casserole, some type of a liquid thing, then they don't, they lose their spicy flavor and they're like a nice little potato type of texture. And so if you're missing potatoes, add radishes to your dishes. No. So I'm going to be putting this together. So I'm also going to be adding some peppercorns in the tea strainers as well as mineral salt and then also some bay leaves. So there it is, all ready to go into the oven. I went ahead and added some fresh sage leaves as well. So I would have preferred something more like thyme or parsley, but I couldn't find my thyme plant out there. And my parsley plant is just really leggy and gone to seeds, so I couldn't really get any of that. 
So I went with fresh sage leaves again. Fresh herbs are allowed on stage two. And then in stage three, once we get there, we'll be able to do dried herbs. So this is ready to go in for beef. It's a longer cook time. So four to six hours is what we plan on for cooking beef. And then this will be ready later in the day when we want to eat it for our later meal. And then I am cooking this for the four to six. I'm, I'm really shooting for more like five to six hours cook time at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. So we had the fermented fish already like late morning and then for more like a noon type midday meal I'm going to be doing another blended soup. So this is an idea that I heard from someone else where you can make it fun for kids by different colored soups. So like so far we've had a white soup, a red soup, um, and now we're going to do an orange one. And then we have a green one that's going to be coming up a little bit later. So that can make it kind of fun. Like, what color soup are we having today for little kids? So to do this, I just cut up my carrots in the pan. And then I have this pork, all the soft connective tissue and fat and things from that pork meat stock that I made. And then this ultra, like, that is not even moving. It is so stiff. Jelly meat stock. So I'm going to add a little bit of the meat stock to this. I may need to add a touch of water just because this is so thick just to get this to blend and then I'm going to keep this blended stuff and then add a bit of it every time I make a soup along with pork meat stock. I have three of these jars of the pork meat stock so then I'll just keep that and add some each time I'm using it. So I'm just going to add the meat stock, a little bit of the blended up connective tissue, bring this up to a boil, let it simmer until the carrots are nice and soft blend them up with an immersion blender and then I gave them the choice going forward you can either keep continuing to add raw yolks or you can keep continuing to add the soft boiled eggs kind of whatever sounds good to you and so they wanted to do soft boiled eggs again but I'm going to do the raw yolks just because I, I like that the best but either way you're still getting those soft runny yolks continued on a regular basis which is so powerful and important because they're full of great nutrients so whether it's soft boiled eggs or raw yolks you want to keep continuing those um, soft nutrient dense yolks throughout the rest of the gaps journey on a very regular basis and then the probiotic food will be cultured cream that's really delicious to swirl into this once it's cooled enough um, but while it's still hot in the bowls we will mix in some ghee for extra fat I have to show the up close of this pork meat stock again because it's the best ever. You could bounce it across the room. It's so great. Woohoo! Enjoying some ginger tea with some raw honey added. So here it is when we pulled it out of the oven uh, six hours later. So you can see the meat is nice and cooked with a little bit of that exposed top there. We have nice soft cooked vegetables. Don't those radishes look just like potatoes? Isn't that amazing? And then there's the liquid there, the meat stock that we'll serve. Um, so we're going to be doing this everyone is very excited around here because this is the casseroles are the first type of meal that you actually can eat on a plate now you could eat everything in a bowl if you wanted to but we're very excited about having some meat the carrots radishes leeks things like that on a plate and then cups like mugs of meat stock on the side to drink so then we'll be adding liquid probiotic food into the meat stock additional fat as needed and then for the egg yolks for this meal we're going to save those and do another dessert a little bit later after dinner so i'll show you that 
for the egg yolks that go along with this meal, two per adult and one per child, we are going to save them for our dessert, like I said, and I'm going to make Russian custard. So that's where you separate out the raw yolks and put them in a container like this, and then whip them with a hand mixer until they're very light and fluffy. And before I whip them, I'm going to add some of our raw local honey, and it makes a really delicious kind of treat. So we're enjoying that for our dessert. So tonight I'm going to go ahead and grind up some almonds to make almond flour. So I need this. I want to get this going ahead of time because I'm going to need it when we have um, some Gaps bread on stage four. And of course you can buy almond flour, but Dr. Natasha talks about how anytime you make nut flour and those types of things at home, you get a much higher quality product because nut flours that you buy have already um, been oxidized and the nuts start to really go rancid very quickly and so she said it's better to get the nuts and make the flour yourself and then also I'm going to ferment this so I'm actually going to mix the nut flour after I've ground the almonds into flour I'm going to mix it with enough kefir just to make a nice like cookie dough type consistency and then I'm going to let that sit in a bowl covered with a towel at room temperature for a couple of days so I'm just going to get that going right now and then set it to ferment. Fermentation is amazing for nut flours. So nuts, just like any seed, they don't really want to be eaten. So fermentation helps to deactivate those anti-nutrients, makes them way easier to digest, and also unlocks nutrients. And we know that on gaps, anytime you can make something easier to digest, that means you're going to tolerate it that much better. So I love to ferment nuts to make baked goods or nut butter or whatever it is. So I'm going to go ahead and get that going. Okay, I hope that you guys enjoyed coming along in part two of this GAPS intro vlog. Be sure and stay tuned for parts three and four. It ended up being a four part series all together, so those parts will be coming out very soon. In the meantime, be sure and check out that description box for links to different things that I've mentioned, like my GAPS meal plans, um, how you can work with me as a certified GAPS coach, I have free ebooks, free GAPS resources down there as well. So be sure and check all those things out. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else you think would find it interesting or helpful. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.